me and for the institution that I represent to receive all of you at the Madrid headquarters. On this occasion, we are going to celebrate the fifth annual forum of the MedThink 5 Plus 5 Network in partnership with the European Institute of the Mediterranean and the Union for the Mediterranean. As always, we are delighted to collaborate with your institutions. We also want to take this opportunity to thank, as well as give a warm welcome to the ambassadors, experts, members of governments, organizations and guests, and especially to our Secretary of State. This forum is held in the context of the 2021 Spanish co-presidency of the 5 plus 5 dialogue and drawing on the Tunis declaration adopted at the meeting of foreign ministers in October 22, 2020. This thematic seminar entitled What Prospects for the 5 plus 5 Dialogue in the Mediterranean in Transformation provides a platform of debate which will contribute, as previous seminars have already done, to improve network and the regional integration. All these within the framework of the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic. But I do not want to stand much more in this world of welcome, because the program that we have before us is very wide, and I'm sure that the participation of the speakers will give rise to very interesting reflections. I just want to comment that at the moment, we have the Barsag exhibition, Entre Mundos, which is the result of the cooperation of artistic collectives from Morocco, Tunisia, Algeria, and Spain. It was precisely this fact that the jury of the new call for photo Spain valued as very positive because it highlights that there are regional cooperation initiatives, and not only between public administrations and governments, but also between members of civil societies uh, of the countries from the Mediterranean. I invite all of you to visit this exhibition during your stay in Madrid. And without further ado, I give the floor to Mr. Senem Florenza, Executive President of the European Institute of the Mediterranean. Welcome again, and thank you very much to all of you. The General of the Union for the Mediterranean, Ambassador Nasser Kamel, cher ami, secretary general de l'Union du Maghreb Parra. Dear uh, friends, Taïeb uh, Agouche, uh, Nasser Kamel. Well, it's really a pleasure to be with you uh, today, this morning, at the occasion of the opening of this seminar of the uh, 5 plus 5 uh, METHINK. I am extremely uh, grateful to the uh, Casa Arabe uh, for hosting uh, this activity. It's always a pleasure to work with our uh, brother institution in Madrid, Casa Arabe. And I pay homage to my good friend, uh, not only uh, to, the, uh, to you, uh, Cristina, but uh, uh, Pedro, with whom we had been working for many years together. And we had the occasion recently uh, to work together again preparing for this seminar before uh, he was sent as uh, ambassador of Spain uh, to Baghdad in, in recent weeks. And uh, I have uh, as well to thank the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for having first asked us to organize uh, this conference as one of the events uh, to underline and to, and to give content uh, and to give participation to other institutions uh, of the Spanish presidency of the 5 plus 5 uh, dialogue. You know that the 5 plus 5 dialogue uh, had always been, since the beginning, it was created in 1990, uh, kind of intergovernmental 
uh, operation. A necessity was felt to broaden its scope and to integrate into the exercise other representatives along with the governments. And this is uh, why uh, our, our leaders, the heads of state and government, at the summit of the 5 plus 5 uh, uh, dialogue in Malta in 2012, commissioned specifically, and as it is stated in the final declaration of that summit, commissioned the European Institute of the Mediterranean, the IMED, to organize a network uh, of uh, think tanks and civil society institutions, mainly uh, academic uh, institutions, uh, public diplomacy institutions, uh, to participate in this dialogue of uh, uh, 5 plus 5 in the uh, Western Mediterranean. And that's, of course, what we did. And so in the, in the last years, we organized a general uh, conference uh, as this one, uh, and thematic conferences. I was showing uh, to Madam uh, Secretary of State one of the last uh, publications uh, on these thematic issues, as in that case, the very important issue at this moment of the transportation, and uh, the, because it's, it's in deep crisis and in deep transformation at this moment in all over the world, with the changing of the globalization and the value chains, etc., and specifically in the Mediterranean. Well, and this conference, therefore, uh, comes at a very uh, uh, crucial point, because we are trying to recover from the pandemic and because we have to face incredible challenges, uh, incredible challenges that uh, we can uh, uh, transform into opportunities. Of course, we have first the challenge to recover from the pandemic. Uh, in fact, as I have said in different occasions, we had to close down the world. That's what we did for more than one year. Incredible as it may seem, that's what we did. Everybody locked in his own home, usually except for very exceptional and necessary uh, services. Uh, and so we inflicted the world with a drop in, in the economy and the GDP, for example, of more than 10% which had never been seen since uh, the, the crisis in the 30s, with the consequences it had in the 30s, remember, uh, and 40s. And so it is a very, very serious endeavor uh, to recover from the pandemic. Fortunately, we think that we have the best chances because uh, there, has no, uh, there have been no distractions. We just stopped the world and now we have to put it working again, and that's fortunately what is happening in maybe a different way. And uh, I would stress the point that the pandemic and the crisis uh, had accelerated some of the uh, uh, changes that were already taking place. Changes that are, as I said before, a challenge in each case and a source of opportunities. Uh, during the pandemic, we made the big jump forward in the digitalization of our societies, our, our, our firms, our, our industries, in all sectors. And this is here to stay. Uh, although we need the human contact face to face, and I am specifically uh, glad that this is one of the first occasions in which we can organize a conference face to face. Eh? In my last period in Vienna as ambassador to the United Nations institution, I said, well, uh, we keep the, the, the ritual because we celebrate uh, online uh, conferences and, and things, but there are no corridors, there are no lobbies, so uh, we need that. We can work with that for a short period, but then we need to recover face-to-face -face contact, and so I'm glad that in this occasion we we doubted whether it would be possible or not, and I'm grateful to Casa Arabe that they accepted, and the ministry, the Spanish Ministry of Foreign Affairs, that they accepted finally to do it uh, uh, in person. And the other challenges and evolutions are, in fact, the, I would say, 
between the evolutions that did not only the digital but uh, the sustainability uh, challenge. Huh? Yeah, but uh, what we have gained in this last period is public knowledge and public awareness of the seriousness of the situation. And uh, of course, this, which is an immense challenge, is as well, is as well a source of opportunities because we are preparing for the green uh, uh, transformation. Uh, we are preparing for the energy uh, 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 revolution and transformation, etc. Uh, for the first time, we see that really the big uh, car uh, manufacturers uh, are launching new and models of electric cars. I'm convinced because I had some uh, engineers, good friends, who told me that they could have done it 25 years back. But the investments in the car manufacturing, in the oil industry, and the working of the whole international economy was so strong that they didn't dare to do that. Finally, we are doing that. So we have these immense challenges, uh, these uh, transitions toward a more inclusive uh, uh, and sustainable and digital uh, economy and societies. And uh, okay, so this is what is about in this moment. And specifically in Western Mediterranean, well, we have all the possibilities and we have all the challenges. I think that the, the necessity of cooperation is stronger than ever, as we can see. And I am glad that let me finish by uh, that because it is you who will put the content to this uh, conference. Uh, to have all of you, I'm really grateful that you came, uh, uh, even though with uh, COVID conditions, uh, the, 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 the audience cannot be as large as uh, it could be, be otherwise. And I am specifically uh, grateful for the presence of uh, Madame Secretary of State and uh, the Secretary of the Union for the Mediterranean and the Secretary General of the uh, uh, UFM. Because at this point in time, as I was saying, it is more evident than ever, for example, that the Union uh, for the Arab Maghreb is the permanent symbol of the immense possibilities of cooperation in the Maghreb area. We were just talking uh, a few minutes before with the Secretary General of that seminar. I see here Emilio. Uh, that seminar we organized some years, well, many years back, the Cudino Maghreb. Eh? Uh, that's what we are paying, well, excuse me for saying so, you are paying, in fact, every year uh, not having a greater uh, economic integration. So this is what the permanent symbol is the Union for the Arab Maghreb. And the Union for the Mediterranean, well, it is, it is nowadays the, the, the general framework for cooperation between both shores of the Mediterranean, the whole of the European Union and the whole of the partner countries south and east uh, of the Mediterranean. And I see increasing good results. And I'm not referring to the most evident things, because thing, uh, people ten, have a tendency to, to, to give opinions about uh, the UFM because of the projects, which is splendid thing, which is very good. But increasingly I see something which is even more important because this, the Secretary of the Union for the Mediterranean is the only one who is present at all different formations of the uh, uh, Euromed ministerial conferences, whether it be conferences of foreign affairs, of transportation, of women affairs, of social affairs, etc. And so, uh, 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 Ambassador uh, Nasser Kamel, you are, with your institution, increasingly the bearer and the promoter of the Euromed agenda, of the cooperation between both shores of the Mediterranean in the largest sense. And there is no other example in the world of a better structure, even I would say financed, and working scheme of cooperation north and south in any other part of the world. 
So we have the best chances. You are at the beginning still of the operation of the institution after a few years, but I see already increasing results because you are not only promoting projects, but promoting policies that come to the ministerial conferences and become reality. And this is the great thing that has to take us to a new world uh, in, in the Mediterranean. Uh, and it is, the stakes are very high. We need it badly because in many respects we are much worse today than when we started the Barcelona process uh, 25 and some more years ago. But we, I think we are in the good way. But everybody has to bring uh, its effort and its support. Excuse me, maybe I was too long, uh, uh, but I wanted to say that. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much uh, for your attention. And I pass the floor to Madam Secretary of State. Thank you, uh, dear Secretary General Nasser Kamel, Secretary General Tayyip Bakush, uh, Ambassador Senen Florenza, dear ambassadors and friends, thank you for this opportunity. I'm very honored to be here uh, to open this uh, fifth MedThink Forum uh, of the 5 plus 5 Dialogue, the most important think tank event in the West Mediterranean region. I want to thank the EMED and the Union for the Mediterranean uh, for making this possible uh, and for their commitment to the 5 plus 5 di dialogue and uh, to the stability in the Mediterranean. Um, these events are more necessary than ever and the contribution of think tanks is crucial uh, for authorities to make uh, informed uh, decisions. This is the first uh, MedThinks uh, uh, meeting after the pandemic, uh, and it is even more special because, because this is uh, the year when Spain holds the Northern Presidency of the 5 plus 5 dialogue. In the coming months, we will host uh, a variety of uh, sectorial meetings uh, and also uh, ministers of foreign affairs conference and therefore, this uh, MedThink edition uh, that uh, revolves around the idea of transformation will be very helpful for our uh, meetings later. Change has become the new normal in our fa fast-paced world, uh, and the pandemic has precipitated some trends that were already there. The surge of digital platforms, relocation of supply chains, all the transformation of the job market and the workplace. These happen also in our Mediterranean region and they, required us, they require us to rethink it. After uh, last year's uh, 25th anniversary, the European Union updated its framework by adopting a new agenda for the Mediterranean last February. Spain is fully committed to uh, the Barcelona process and determined to push Euro-Mediterranean uh, agenda and issues even farther. On the 29th of November, we will be hosting again two ministerial meetings in Barcelona, the European Union Southern Neighborhood, Neighborhood Meeting and the Union for the Mediterranean's Regional Forum, both of them in person. The Union of the Mediterranean is a natural forum for Mediterranean countries to articulate the Southern Neighborhood policy. Under this umbrella, the 5 plus 5 dialogue plays a central role to make progress in the regional agenda in a variety of areas like labor or home affairs, and it encourages a more active participation of all actors of civil society, including think tanks, of course. Thus, the Med Think Tank uh, Forum here plays a key role as part of the discussion, helping us reflect uh, on our policy-making efforts. There are three topics in which we wish to hear your proposals, nearshoring, digitalization, and sustainability. The pandemic has accelerated the relocation of value chains around the globe. The new agenda identifies the southern neighborhood as a potential setting 
for its nearshoring strategy. At the center of this strategy is the goal of creating opportunities that are beneficial for all. Bringing production closer reduces the risk of supply disruptions and has a positive impact for the consumers and the environment by reducing transport costs and times. It improves the business environment and job opportunities on both shores. In short, we need to make the most of our proximity and of this opportunity. The Spanish experience proves that North Africa is an excellent destination for trade and investments and that it is mutually beneficial. Since 2000, the volume of trade with North African countries has risen considerably. This growth coincides with the signing of the Euro-Mediterranean Association Agreements and it is the result of the integration of our supply chains. Nearshoring would result in a more integrated region, closing the gap of economic indicators of both shores and creating stronger people-to-people -people ties. Implementing nearshoring networks requires planning at all levels. We are defining new instruments like the Economic and Investment Plan or the first Team Europe initiative focused on the Mediterranean, aiming at creating an employment, trade and investment hub within the Union for the Mediterranean. We, is, we expect our southern neighbours to join the discussion and to be vocal about their wishes and needs. Our second topic is the digitalization at the heart of the profound, profound transformations we are experiencing in every aspect of our lives. We should pursue the digital transition to make our industries more competitive in rapidly growing sectors. It is the ideal way of creating an environment of opportunities for our youth. They provide high quality jobs and connect different economies and create more value. Digitalization improves the, pub the public administration service, thus allowing for a closer relation between the state and its citizens. It reinforces trust in the institutions and strengthens governance. We need to aim at an inclusive transition in the digital era. Education is the answer. Public institutions have to provide the skills that the new job market demands. We have instruments like Twinnings, the Economic and Investment Plan, or the Erasmus Plus program, but we can certainly develop additional tools. Last but not least, we need obviously to address climate change. It is the biggest challenge of our time and also a priority for the European Union. Northern and Southern Mediterranean countries will be affected alike. Collective action is the only way forward. In this context, water is one of the Union of the Mediterranean's key areas of action. This October, an European Union UFM Water Investment Policy Forum has taken place under a hybrid format in Cairo. In, 2000, in 2022, a thematic conference on water is expected to take place in Palma de Mallorca. There is room for collective action. Our region is perfect for developing clean energy alternatives like solar and wind. We even have a strategy on green hydrogen, a promising clean source. We need to develop further initiatives and incentives to these sources. We count with the institutional framework to make this reality possible, the 5 plus 5 dialogue and the Union for the Mediterranean. We must make the most of this multilateral fora. I'm sure we will not miss this opportunity. I would like to reiterate my gratefulness to the MedThink Forum for providing us with a space where think tanks and public diplomacy institutions have the chance to share ideas and expertise. Thank you. And now I have the pleasure to give the floor to Mr. Trayeb Bakush, Secretary General of the Union for the Mediterranean. Oh, I changed the order. <laughs> Uh, okay, 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 okay. Please. No, no, no problem. We are among friends. Comme vous le savez bien, c'est Monsieur Bakouch, le secrétaire général de l'Union du Maghreb arabe. Mon cher ami. So, my dear friend, uh, you have the floor. Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, it is always a pleasure for me to meet you here in a forum uh, of the uh, 
5 plus 5 dialogue to debate on a topic uh, really uh, important nowadays. The, the, the Western Mediterranean area. It is also the opportunity to present my best wishes for Spain, for the Spanish people, uh, because the National Day was yesterday, so it coincided with our arrival. Uh, the sit regional situation today it has uh, different mutations, especially in the South Shore. And also, the, this huge uh, world pandemic has impacted on all our countries in the two last years, in the uh, socio-economic and health uh, finance uh, aspects, and it uh, really uh, hampers uh, the mobility. So everything makes us to rethink the future of the 5 plus 5 dialogue to strengthen the resilience. It is also necessary to uh, widen the sectorial uh, cooperation and also to spot uh, the health and socio-economic uh, shortages. We have to strengthen the human security in its largest sense to, to have that as an objective and all the other domains really goes to this point. If we consider security, the food security, we have to remind that that in 2013, uh, where the Dialogue 5 plus 5 had a, uh, uh, a meeting in Algiers and uh, started a cooperation in the south in the field of agriculture, food and the rural world. So we have to note also that the animal health is uh, the object of meetings of the Mediterranean uh, network. Also, uh, fishing is another priority of the initiative of WestMed for a sustainable uh, economy in the Western Mediterranean. Uh, the think tank uh, in charge responsible for FUJ uh, really have established the priorities of this uh, group. Uh, the management of water, it is through uh, the Mediterranean uh, network for the organisms of uh, the uh, basin, Mediterranean Basin, the F Mediterranean Water Forum. And we had a meeting recently the 1st of October 2021 in Marseille. Economic security is closely linked to food security because industry, trade and tourism have been to a, a really a slowdown through because of the pandemic. So the manufacturers in the region have still difficulties due to the shortage of demand and, and also to the slowdown of the supply chain and also the, 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 the impact on the circulation of people. So this situation really implies uh, an increased unemployment. So for the infrastructure, uh, I'm not going to linger too much uh, uh, on the projects, ongoing projects. We have a cooperation with the African Development African Bank and we have uh, the BRIDA program. I'm, I'm going to just uh, to limit to the project 5 plus 5. Duma has pro uh, take, taken part in several webinars face-to-face uh, -face also before the pandemic and then online uh, meetings. The participation was become, has become a uh, uh, virtual, like the seminars on the 4th and 5th uh, October, uh, that dealt with the transport uh, uh, sector and uh, uh, so, and also how to um, to have new opportunities as a transition, and it has been uh, organized by Euromed. I would add also, uh, you made also. Uh, the uh, ongoing initiative 
uh, for a uh, uh, C cluster, Maghreb uh, C, uh, um, that will enrich the projects and the initiatives 5 plus 5. There is also the digital security, the human aspect, because we also had a project of uh, di uh, digitalization. And after the pandemic and the work, uh, uh, telework, telework, we had a complementary work for the management of that, already inspired by our cooperation with the com Commissar. So this project of, tran of uh, new digital transformation is, on, is being debated with our African uh, partners. Also, the streamlining of administrative management and also the, the work streamlining and also reducing uh, risk. This is very important for the action and the, uh, the security of uh, digital data. Uh, digitalization makes easier uh, the statistic uh, uh, processes and in 12, uh, in 2014, UMA, EU, UMA uh, uh, launched a structure to uh, collect uh, the data, uh, having the basis at the General Secretariat. The, the creation of a statistic cells uh, it was in 2016 with the financial support of Labad. Its role is to gather, process, and spread statistics in the countries belonging to the UMA, to coordinate the statistic uh, work uh, among throughout the countries in the region. And the ongoing project now is the harmonization of the price index to consumption for consumption with the support of the uh, CUA and LABAT. The preparation of the report on the migration, labor migration, with the financial support of e uh, IELO and uh, uh, also the regional strat strategy uh, in the Maghreb Arab with coordination with the uh, World Bank. I would like to quote here. The statistics concerning the pandemic of COVID-19 in the region. The preparation and uh, the spreading of, a, of a, um, a weekly journal in all the countries of the region. So at the date of the 10th of October, the region of UMA has 2 million and. Uh, 235,000 positive cases that have been noticed. Two million, two million. Uh, 44,000 healing, 50,800 uh, deaths, 30 million uh, vaccinated people with the first dose, and 24,000. 24,161,000 with the second dose. So the ongoing projects at the moment, uh, there are several. I'm going to quote the creation of platform of ex data exchange with the, um, the, the, secu the, the statistic of the countries and also the harmonization of the price index for uh, the state for real estate. To finish, I would say some uh, words about the perspective of cooperation in the framework of this cooperation f uh, after the pandemic. This pandemic uh, has still a very uh, tangible effect on the Mediterranean basin. Uh, so we really have to face also the uh, refugees crisis, the political instability and the weakness of the systems of social protection. Uh, really, uh, we are 
we uh, are called by the need of, of really create common access and progr cooperation programs and also to strengthen uh, the the, uh, the epidemiological systems for the by the cooperation in the pharmaceutical industry the strengthening of the links in matters of scientific exchange and exchanges and finally uh, seeing the massive phenomenon of the uh, brain uh, uh, diaspora. So we need more coordination uh, between the two shores of the Mediterranean to find fair solutions with objective approaches that take into account the common interest. Thank you very much for your attention. And finally, so, uh, to Ambassador Nasser Kamel. Thank you very much. Secretary General de l'Union. No, no, not. <laughs> of the Union for the Mediterranean. <laughs> Thank you very much. Je pensais que c'était un forum 5 plus 5, alors. Je croyais, I thought it was a 5 plus 5 forum, so I had prepared my speech in French, even if uh, my, my dear friends here are speaking in English. But, but I think I'll speak in the language, most spoken language in, in the group 5 plus 5. So I'm going to say to... Uh, say uh, good morning to my colleagues and to congratulate uh, the secretary the secretary of state for these for hosting this event and for having been recently uh, shown her extraordinary qualities for the creation uh, of this uh, foreign spanish foreign policy and also my friend sari leming Mr. Bakush, and uh, and then my neighbors in Barcelona. It's important think tanks when it comes to Euro Mediterranean integration and cooperation. C'est vraiment un plaisir, hein? Et je le dis uh, de tout. It is really a, ple a pleasure to see you face to face. Finally, after several months, we really can to see uh, to see each other, especially in this beautiful, uh, magnificent uh, building of Casa Arabe. What a beautiful symbol of the cooperation without talking about Madrid, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. And the fact that it is, takes place here is also uh, a testimony of the support that Spain is providing to the Dialogue 5 plus 5 and also uh, the contrib their contribution uh, to the, uh, from the north shore of the uh, Mediterranean to the south. Uh, so it has uh, become the institutional framework where the ministers and the responsibles of the civil society and the uh, players, the key uh, players on the spot, find a, um, a way, a space to cooperate together, to work together and to, and to find solutions. And we can say the same for the Dialogue 5 plus 5 that has always been the an engine for the cooperate sub-regional uh, engine and very, very productive. So this dialogue is kind of an incubator that can uh, produce, allows to have innovative uh, reflections and also to find very specific solutions uh, for the challenges that we, we surround us. So it is a very essential moment to tackle the debates, uh, the problems that we are living in this uh, context. Ladies and gentlemen, you know that the pandemic of COVID-19 uh, has 
uh, has really uh, shown uh, the fragility not only within the countries but um, in the relations uh, between the countries and also that the crisis has not hit the, co the countries in the same way. This crisis has uh, shown the interdependency, the growing interdependency of our systems, the vulnerability, the growing vulnerability in our countries and uh, between our countries, the economical and social impact of the pandemic, we all know that, and, and really it hit uh, the most vulnerable. And uh, I think we have to have a program uh, post-COVID based on three elements. The first uh, is a regional, uh, an effective integral re uh, um, policy to really develop, to foster the economic growth. The second would be an inclusive development based on the uh, digital transition i think i'm repeating a bit what you are saying but we are we agree that the on the priorities and the third and is because the mediterranean the union for the mediterranean uh, insists on that is that this um, has to be based on an ecological transition if you allow me i'm going to develop uh, these three topics uh, beginning by the uh, regional integration because it is obvious that the economic impact of the crisis was not was uneven or at world level and even at regional level and as the minister has mentioned we have seen very well that this crisis has shown the fragility and the supply chains are really uh, dominated by by china for example and other countries of the uh, and, and so this situation has relaunched a debate to, to reconsider the current economic uh, production uh, uh, model. So you have spoken about the, in, the importance of, um, of uh, uh, the near-shoring, that is, to be when I when I say that we have to uh, have uh, uh, the enterprises near us, that it means uh, uh, near shoring. I am talking about um, the regional at regional level, Mediterranean uh, level, because Europe is a space that uh, should become much more independent in the economic sense, and. It is exactly what we have tackled. Uh, we had prepared recently our report on the integration uh, uh, report with the, in the Mediterranean, and that was one of the great conclusions of this report. Uh, this report shows that uh, we are all aware that the level of regional integration it is under the potential of the region. There has been some progress, quite important, in the last years, so we have to go even further and work uh, for a, a regional uh, integration much more, uh, much deeper uh, among our countries. And also this uh, report show, show that there is an urgency to have a cooperation between Europe and uh, its neighbors at, at the economic level. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, COVID-19 has brought also an important opportunity to start thinking about the potential of the regionalization and of the supply chains. I, I don't want to uh, to list all the elements, but I'm going to move to the second element, which is very important in my opinion, and which is key, and that is to, uh, to a, a plan after COVID uh, based on inclusion, because the economic and social growth uh, has, above all, be inclusive, because the pandemic. It, it has become in in an in an employment 
an employment crisis even worse of the one in 2008 that it was a world crisis in our region i am not talking uh, only the south but even in the north uh, the unemployment for young for women for unqualified workers the, the partial workers and also the self-employed even artists have, re have been really uh, hit by this crisis so according to the uh, world uh, labor organization Uh, has uh, really affected this crisis 305 million uh, workers working at partial, at partial time. And this has increased the inequalities between other regions. In Spain, uh, unprecedented measures were taken to uh, to, to, have a, to, to provide a, a social support to face uh, and to counter the restrictions uh, and, and their impact on the economy to, to soften this shock. But these measures progressively are going to stop. So we will have to keep some, uh, some support for the most vulnerable. It is very important to do that in, the, in both shores of the Mediterranean. Another uh, important element is the uh, digital transition, as you have mentioned, has a key role, really a key role. We have all seen that this COVID crisis had a positive impact uh, in concerning this topic, uh, this sector. It is the digitalization because since the beginning of the pandemic, our daily life has changed and there are new practices of communication. And this uh, will remain, most probably it will remain after the crisis, these new ways of communication. But this is only a part of the iceberg because there are all the fundamental services that have uh, have harnessed this uh, digitalization. So, uh, especially after the lockdown and to keep the social cohesion, the social context during and after the pandemic. So, in my opinion, the uh, digital transition is really at the heart of the, uh, the period of, of uh, post-COVID and we have to develop it further. There are examples about what we are doing. Uh, we have used, for example, uh, the, the progress in this um, called Tuni, Tsuni. We have organized uh, the capacity building programs, and the last ones were in Algeria or with Algeria because it was a, a, a distance, but it had a very, very positive echo in this country, and uh, we continue to to support uh, the efforts uh, the, of this organization in the region and to follow the good examples from the north and uh, just try to apply them on the south. The third element, uh, which is very important for this period after COVID, is is uh, their sustainability and here I mean to face and better build and also take take into account uh, the climate and environmental challenges existing in our region today uh, because we live in a region that has the reputation of its its uh, cultural wealth all this mediterranean uh, uh, world was the cradle uh, of, uh, of all the universities we have the highest number of uh, sea species so we have to keep uh, uh, this uh, variety, but it has its limits because w there is uh, dependent on an agriculture which is very sensitive to the climate. And so there are uh, now the, ch uh, the climate change and there are hot spots which are affecting agriculture. 
So there are uh, 700 million Mediterraneans living around this Mediterranean. Uh, 300 million tourists come around. The, that means that uh, over one million, uh, one billion people are around this this Mediterranean basin. So, so the uh, Euro Mediterranean Organization organized hosted three interministerial uh, meetings. The first on energy. We spoke about the energetic transition, the new energy and renewable. The second uh, about the blue economy, a concept that becomes more and more um, better understood, better uh, proved in our in our region. It is um, an, an, a system of economy that creates uh, employment and, and wealth, but but does not leave so much emissions and waste. And this is possible. And just last week, we organized uh, also in Cairo an um, uh, interministerial meeting uh, with sustainability. And the last one um, um, showed that the member states were agreed about the objectives for uh, to really face uh, the challenges that surround us and to answer this emer climate emergency uh, I have just mentioned. I think this um, interministerial uh, um, world is very important that will allow us to go to Glasgow in several uh, weeks' time with a unified criter criterion. Uh, countries that have the same uh, challenges and the same positions. We are 42 countries and this is important. It is, has some weight and it will, will certainly have a, a weight, inshallah, uh, as we say, and we hope that it, it will uh, reach uh, very successful conclusions compared with uh, last year. So, ladies and, gen and gentlemen, so these these talks, these conversations are going to the right decision, no matter if it is the Union for the Mediterranean or to strengthen the cooperation among our countries or the Union of the Mag Arab Maghreb or the academic and the think tanks because uh, this meeting today is opportunity to go forward in the right direction and I really trust that, the I trust the fact that uh, this uh, meeting will allow us to identify good uh, solutions at the service of the citizens of our Mediterranean. I wish you a very productive exchange and I really thank you for your attention and especially for your presence. Thank you very much. So, uh, my, uh, sec Madam Secretary of the State, so we have got to this opening part of the uh, meeting. So we will resume at three o'clock in the same room at three o'clock. But I would like to thank. Uh, our in guests. I, I, did, I didn't know if uh, uh, using uh, the, the word guest because they are really the holders of these topics. Uh, but uh, so I really will insist on thanking him for their presence and for having chosen this forum and also to uh, convey these important messages. So thank you to all of you to be here and we will meet again at three. Thank you. Il y a une photo de famille maintenant à l'extérieur, à la sortie de...